Hey guys, good afternoon. It's time for another video, and if you've read the title of this video, you might be thinking the same thing that I usually think when I see these this versus that videos. I get a little cringy and think a lot of times they're stupid. But I think this one's going to make a lot of sense. If you watch my channel, you know that I got the Fuji X100V specifically as a take-anywhere-I-go camera that I can do stock photography with. Before I got this camera, I was starting to experiment a little bit with shooting stock with an iPhone and I really at one time thought should I get this if the phone is going to work. So today I'm going to compare the two. So the first thing I want to talk about in comparing the two things, an iPhone and the Fuji X100V, is image quality. Honestly, I don't even think there's really much of a comparison. The Fuji is far and away a better camera when it comes to image quality. Phones produce amazing images these days, but when you take a little tiny sensor compared to an APS-C size sensor in a quality, nearly professional intended camera, low light alone is far superior with the Fuji, the size of the sensor, the, the megapixels, all of that. So in my humble opinion, image quality is really not a comparison when it comes to these two cameras for the sake of stock photography. The Fuji far and away wins. However, does the iPhone or any cell phone produce a quality enough image to send to the stock agencies? Is it good enough? Now I hate to use the word good enough. It's one of my things that I just drives me a little bit nuts, but I still think it's a good question to say, is the iPhone going to produce quality enough images to send to the stock agencies? And the answer to that question is yes. I've sent many images in from my iPhone and a lot of them have been accepted and a lot of them have even sold. So the quality thing, even though the Fuji produces a much better file, when it comes to stock photography, the iPhone might be good enough. I have gotten comments over the last several videos from a guy in England named Peter and whenever I see his comments I get a little envious because England is one of my favorite places to be. I've been there a couple of times when I was younger loved it. And so whenever he makes a comment, I think, man, I've got to get back to England. But his comment on the last video was something to really think about. He saw in his stock sales an increase when he went to a higher file size camera. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but he, when he went to the bigger file size on his new camera, he saw sales go up. I don't know that I can say I've ever actually seen that. Usually it's the content of my images that tend to sell better not the file size, but if what he's saying is true at all, the Fuji is going to have a sizable advantage over the phone. Now let me say that one of the reasons I wanted to get the Fuji was because when I first had the concept of having a high quality camera that I took everywhere with me, at that time I was carrying an iPhone 4. And I can't remember exactly what I was doing, but I took some photographs that I thought, wow, that would be great for stock photography. It's too bad I only have my iPhone with me. And at the time, I think an iPhone 4 just did not produce images that were quality enough to send into the stock agency, be, or at least be accepted. You could send anything you wanted, I suppose. Because I did send something that I shot with the iPhone 4. It was kind of a neat image of a car in a slippery road and stuff, and I just happened to snap that. They didn't take it because of quality, and rightfully so. But back in those days when I had a phone that didn't produce enough high enough quality for stock photography, that's when I started thinking I want uh, a different camera, started looking into things, and, and it took me years before I bought the Fuji, and by that time, quality of phones was better. So there is a comparison there, but as far as the quality of image, Fuji's going to beat it every time. The question is just, is the phone good enough? The other thing that I think is worth at least talking about is perception. If you are in a place where you're going to whip out your phone, say you're in a restaurant and you want to take a photograph of the food because the server just brought you this amazingly well-presented plate of food and the lighting is just right from the table and you think this could be a great stock photo, so you take a photograph of it. If you take your phone out, nobody's going to look at you oddly and think, what is that guy over there doing taking pictures of his food? Because everybody likes to take snapshots of their food, post it all over Facebook, right? But if you pull out a bigger camera, you might draw some attention to yourself. If you're taking photos where in a restaurant or a store or something where maybe they don't want you taking pictures, that might draw some attention and somebody might question what you're doing. Now, 
That being true, it has yet to happen to me, and I've walked around the grocery store with my Fuji, taking photographs as I push the cart around, trying to get, you know, quote unquote, shopping stock photography. And no, I don't think anybody even noticed that I was doing it. I've yet to run into that as an issue, but I do know that if I pull a phone out and probably take a picture of just about anything, nobody's gonna have a problem with that. Whereas even the Fuji being a small compact camera might draw some attention. And if you're taking pictures in a place that, you know, typically they don't want you taking photographs, you, you know, you might get some negative feedback. So certainly I've got to talk about convenience. That was the entire point of getting this camera. I wanted a convenient camera that I can take anywhere I go and produce high quality images. Now, as far as convenience, you're just not going to beat the phone. It's simple to carry. It fits in your pocket. It's convenient. The X100V, it's a small camera. You can fit it in a lot of pockets. If I'm wearing a jacket, it'll certainly fit in a jacket pocket pretty easily, but it's not going to fit in my pants pocket. So you're carrying it. It's not quite as convenient, but it's, as far as a decent camera, it's pretty convenient. Certainly more convenient than a DSLR with a bunch of lenses, for sure. The other thing that's absolutely true is even if I take my X100V with me, I still am going to be carrying my phone. So, I, I mean, you're going to have your phone with you regardless. But one of the things that's always true, as far as that convenience, is when I stick my phone in my pocket, Who's to say that lens isn't getting lint on it or, you know, anything like that. It's getting dirty. When I reach in my pocket to grab it, how often do you stick your fingerprint right on top of that lens? There's kind of some drawbacks as far as the convenience factors because that phone is getting used for everything. It gets set down. You know, how often do you clean that lens? I don't clean it as often as I should for sure. With the Fuji, however, I've got a lens cap. I'm more protective with it and so... The fact that it's convenient maybe has some drawbacks because you get a little sloppy sometimes. I don't know, maybe that, maybe you guys don't do that. I probably do that. Now, if you're going to make a good comparison, you've got to talk about price. Fuji X100V is about $1,400. What I've noticed is when the next version comes out, even then, the previous version of the X100 doesn't seem to drop in price very much. Now, you can get them used, of course, and get a better deal, but $1,400. I just checked the price for the latest iPhone, the iPhone 12 Pro Max, I think they call it, and it's about $1,100. Now, of course, AT&T, Verizon, things like that might have deals. You can trade in your old iPhone, but you're talking about $1,400 compared to $1,100. Price is fairly comparable. One thing that's true about price is even if you buy the Fuji X100, you're probably still going to own a phone. So it's not like you're going to do one or the other you're gonna buy the phone more than likely. I have an iPhone XR. Um, I just got done paying it off. I have no desire to get a new one. So I am saving money as far as that. Once I've got the phone, I'm happy with my phone as far as what it does for me. I don't use it as a stock camera anymore. So in terms of price, you're gonna buy the phone anyway, but they're about the same as far as price. 1100 versus 1400. So as far as a conclusion on what is a better option as far as having a convenient take everywhere you go stock camera fuji certainly is better quality fuji costs a little bit more especially when you realize you're going to buy the phone anyway iphone's a little more convenient but for me the fuji is not just a stock camera it is a stock camera that's its main reason i got it but i use it for other things i've told you i already shot a wedding with it we are probably going to do more weddings in 2021 so this will be going through the paces of doing other things besides just stock so to come to a conclusion as which is a better choice, I think that depends on who you are and what you want to do. iPhones will certainly produce a high enough quality image that you can send into the stock agencies, but the X100V is going to produce a much higher quality image. Now, as a professional photographer, that's important to me because I'm using it for more than just stock photography. Plus, if producing a higher quality file, a bigger file, sells better on the stock agency, if that's true, then that alone is probably worth it because you're going to miss sales shooting with the phone. I also am going to use the X100 for a lot of other things besides just stock photography. So I'm going to use it in, you know, portraits, certainly weddings. I've already used it for weddings. So the bigger file size and better quality images, especially in those high ISO and low light situations, 
it's certainly worth it. And the last thing, just a little extra for me, I do not typically have a problem being inspired to go out and take photos. I love photography. Whether I'm in the studio, whether I'm walking around downtown, whatever I'm doing, I am motivated to take photographs. But I will tell you that since I got this camera, I'm even more inspired. It's just a fun camera to use. Far more than my iPhone ever did for me. For inspiration, it's probably worth it. I don't know that I really drew any rock solid conclusions, but I hope I brought some things to light. If it's something that you're interested in and it's something that you're trying to decide, I hope I helped a little bit. Leave a comment if you would, subscribe, thumbs up for me if you would. I appreciate all of you guys. And we are wrapping up 2020. Hopefully that'll be in our rearview mirror very soon. We'll go into a new year. But I thank everybody for watching this year. It has been an interesting year, but a good year for this channel. I've been able to make a lot more videos and I appreciate everybody watching, commenting, coming back to watch again. And you guys have a great day. Mm -hmm.